And this portion of the Casey Crew Podcast is brought to you by Southern New Hampshire University. Thinking of going to college or continuing your education? Whether you're attending for the first time or going back to complete your degree, there are three common financial aid mistakes most students make that you can avoid. Discover them and Southern New Hampshire University by texting TRY to 554433. Learn about Southern New Hampshire University plus the top three financial aid mistakes and how to avoid them by texting TRY to 554433. That's T-R-Y to 554433. Message and data rate supply. What up, y'all? It's DJ NV. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Now, we missed you guys last week. There yes, was we did. So much going on. Too much going on. If you follow us on Instagram, I'm sure you guys got a, a little touch of everything we were doing from vacation. Mm-hmm. We went to uh, Turks and Caicos for our one year old's birthday. Yes. We decided instead of having a party and, 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 you know, it's, it's the one year old first birthday. You got to do it big, right? That's what everybody says. The first birthday, you got to do big in the sweet 16. So we decided, you know what? Let's all go somewhere nice and we can have a little mini vacation and really enjoy ourselves. So our little baby girl turned one in Turks and Caicos. We had an amazing Pretty time. Cute. Yeah, it would have been nice to throw her a party, but we literally just threw a big party for London and Jackson. Right a month and change prior. So it didn't make sense to throw a similar party inviting the same loved ones and friends so soon after just doing it. So we decided to take her on vacation instead. Yeah, we had an amazing time. I know people are like, oh, there he goes, using the word amazing. But yeah, it was an amazing (laughs) time. No, I think that they said that you use absolutely positively. Okay, well, it was absolutely (laughs) positively an amazing time, all right? We had a, um, uh-huh. it was just dope. We went to Turks and Caicos. It was all about fun and, and the kids jumping in the pool. And the the, the reason I the love. The beach and the water sports. Yeah. And the beach in Turks and Caicos is just beautiful. There's not many waves. The water's not rough. They can play in the actual beach. They can see the fish swim by them. So they had a great time. But the reason why I love it so much, and we went to beaches. And the reason why I love it so much is because, you know, the kids could jump from pool to pool and the water was for them. Meaning it was their size pool, Mm -hmm. like London, Jackson and Brooklyn ran around the pool, fell in the water, got back up, ran around some more, fell in the water and they had a lovely time. And then the water sports were great. Gear got me back to parasailing. Mm -hmm. I said I would never do that again. (laughs) It's not that I don't like heights. Well, it is that I don't like heights, but. I don't what like- is it that, that, get, that gets you so scared? Because you've done it before mm-hmm. and it's so calm and serene. So I don't understand why you're so scared. I think the first Apple time Z. I went parasailing, I think I was in Aruba or Bermuda. No, you were in the Bahamas, actually. No, well, I tried. And it was it was with my cousin and me and him did it. And I guess the winds were just so rough that mm-hmm. it wasn't smooth sailing. It felt like every... 20 seconds it would drop and right drop. that's how you describe and then it. it would catch you back and not for nothing i can swim i'm a pretty good swimmer mm-hmm. i mean i was on a swim team when i was on high school i was pretty good i would have went to the olympics but i just didn't want to do it anymore of course um but dropping from that height mm-hmm. would hurt um yeah right. <laughs> it would definitely hurt if you hit the water from that height at the wrong angle you it die. could be as severe as hitting concrete Absolutely and you know you have to cut the water when you enter the water I'm a non-swimmer and I know that yeah, Exactly and I I didn't feel comfortable with that I didn't like it I didn't have a good time I mean I was holding on to the whatever it's called the parachute or, or whatever it is I was holding on to that. Just call it the straps. It's kind of like straps. The straps, that have yeah, you yeah, that connect to the suspended. parachute. Mm-hmm. But I was when we when we were in Bahamas, I was holding on to that strap so tight that I had blisters on my hand. Just and because you came back with black and blues on your forearms because you were holding. You weren't just holding it with your fists. You were kind of like hugging the straps. Right. So on the upper part of your forearms, they were like black and blue when you came back from that trip. Right. So I told myself I would never do it again. I experienced it once. And that would be it. But, you know, Logan really wanted to go. No, no, no. We went again in Turks and Caicos. A couple of years ago. A few years ago, yes. And I still didn't like it. And you still didn't like it. No. And you guys got me back on this time. Logan really wanted to go. Mm-hmm. And um, you guys kind of forced me. But the last time, you didn't like it because your fear had you so wound up. 
Probably. That's the reason why you didn't enjoy it. It was just as calm and serene as this time. Maybe. But it's just certain things, you know, some things just not for me. Like, just <laughs> it, it is what it is. I just It just wasn't for me. Right. We told Logan that all of the parasailing trips were booked and that we weren't going to be able to do that. We told him that we were going to go. What's that red thing? Um, the big red Mabel. I have no idea. What you yeah, said. The banana boat? No, 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 no. Oh. I told him that we were going to have to do the big red Mabel. It's like this huge red inflatable where you sit down kind of like on a couch. Oh, similar to a banana boat. You sit and they just drag you all through the water. And it drags right. you at a high speed through the water. I told him, I'm like, well, you know, it's all booked up. So we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to do the big red Mabel instead. Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, that'll be fun too. I'm grateful. I just really wanted to go parasailing. But he didn't know that we already booked it for right. him. So all the pictures he was just he was looking so miserable if we took 25 quick pictures he was miserable in 25 of them I couldn't get even half of a smile I was like no babe don't worry we're gonna have fun doing that and you know we still have hours we're gonna do something else we might go on a banana boat right there's a cruise that I want to go on like a nice little beach cruise and whatever and he's like no it's gonna be great and I just couldn't pull a smile out of him and then when we finally told him that we booked the trip and it was supposed to be a surprise. He literally did a backflip on the right. beach, yeah, which scared me because he's been practicing his backflips. But for him to do it on the sand made me nervous because right. usually he, he does it on the grass. He does it on the trampoline. Once he did it on the concrete, but sand kind of sucks you in mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. So you don't really have that buoyancy. Like you don't have that bounce off of the sand. So when he did it, I almost had a coronary. Right. But he was cool. Yeah, he was Kind of like running on the beach, like yeah, running on you. concrete yeah, yeah, or running yeah. in the grass is so much easier. But if you run on the beach, it takes a thousand percent more out of you. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But we had a, we had a, a dope. Dope, 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 dope time. And then, um, anyway, baby, let me just, let me just tell them. So, like he said before, we stayed at beaches. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we stayed there, you know, we've been to Turks and Caicos. This might have been our fourth time. Correct. And the reason why we stayed there is that it's a very nice, family resort it's an Mm all-inclusive so when you book your room it includes everything on the resort all of your food your drinks your your alcohol alcohol there's shows for the kids so if you have little kids it's nice because elmo might be walking around or other little fuzzy characters walking around and london and jackson and Berkey got such a kick out of those characters and we brought them to the shows there was a show every single night correct and you know madison and Logan even kind of enjoyed some of the cheesy shows. (laughs) You know what I mean? So it's nice for the kids. It's like 24 hour food. You can always find a place that's open that you can eat. And free drinks too. Soda, juice, water. There were a lot of alcoholics there. Yeah, a lot of alcoholics there. There's a lot of people that were walking around very, very wibbly wobbly. Right. And if you have, do they call it tweens? Um, Well, there were tween clubs and regular teen teen clubs. clubs. So if you have teens or tweens, what's a tween? Um, in between, the in between, I guess ta- like, not ta- children and teenagers. Yeah, they have cl- just before you become a teenager. So you know, maybe I guess eleven, twelve. Yeah, well, they have clubs for them and, and video game rooms, and they also have um, a nanny service Correct. that's included. So if adults want to get away from their kids, or you know, just want to want to have some private time, you can drop your kids off at a nanny service that. We've never used it because we bring our nanny with us, but I heard that it was very good and people have been able to trust their trust their kids to be there and, and be safe. Right. So, so that's nice. That was our vacation and we had absolutely positively an amazing, <laughs> lovely time uh-huh. and it never stopped. And, and, you know, we got home on a Monday, no, Sunday night, right? Uh, Sunday night, late Sunday. We night. got home late Sunday night and then Tuesday we were shooting a video to my was my single text your number featuring Fetty Wap. Right now on Tuesday we were supposed to also record the podcast. Correct. And what happened was Monday, you know, I had to do shopping, had to get outfits, I had to fly find something fly to wear. Mm-hmm. And when, so we spent all day shopping on Monday. Right. So Tuesday we were supposed to do a, a scene earlier in the day, and we got rained out. Like it was wasn't supposed to rain. It was just supposed to be a little cloudy and it just rained. Right. It rained, it rained, it rained, it rained, which messed up 
part of the video, mm-hmm. you know, and if you know anything about videos or maybe you don't, you know, the director doesn't own the equipment that they shoot on. All that stuff has to be rented. Right. They rent the, the expensive cameras, the expensive lights, uh, the cranes, everything that they need for video had to be rented. So now- and there's a boatload of people involved just right. on the side of filming the video, Correct. let alone all of the extras and the actors and the dancers and everything yeah, else. There's cameramen, there's lighting men, there's uh, cameraman assistants, there's it is so many damn people. Yes, yeah, so many people. So um, the video kind of got washed out. So because the video got washed out, we didn't have a plan B. We checked the weather. The weather's supposed to be sunny. And it Crazy just happened, happened to rain. Yeah. So I, I called my, my beautiful wife who was at home at the time. <laughs> and I was like, babe, she was like, how's the video going? I'm like, well, it's not going great. We haven't taped a scene at all. And my, mind you, we had these big trailers, a trailer for me, a trailer for Fetty Wap. But it was no, we couldn't use them. Mm-hmm. We were just sitting there basically twiddling our thumbs Waiting. trying not to get wet mm-hmm. so we came up with this idea says you know we have this house babe do you mind if we shoot scenes in a house so we just don't lose the day i was like what and i know i said gear's not gonna allow this and Gia was like what <laughs> i said can we use the house and shoot scenes at the house because we have a beautiful pool we can use parts of the you know the, the you know the the front of the house and Gia was like yeah fuck it let's do it mm-hmm. and i was like i bet so you know, we told them if not, they would have lost the whole budget for the day. Right. The whole budget for the day, which was probably around 40 to 50 thousand dollars a day. Right. So um, Gia said, yeah, which was surprising to me because, you know, for Gia to allow somebody in our house, I'm not even gonna say our house for Gia to allow somebody in her house. <laughs> it has to be immaculate. Like Gia's not one of those people that be like, well, yeah, you, come, you can't but just it's, drop by here. But it's messy. No, Gia wants the house to be immaculate like. God was coming over for dinner. Like that's <laughs> how crazy. Gia's house has to be every day. So <laughs> our house wasn't like that because we just got home from vacation. We just had our luggage. You know, it was it just wasn't that. And Gia was like, fuck it, let's do it. Which I was surprised. And I thank mean, it's you. still it's still it was good because as soon as we got home, I started unpacking and I started putting things away. And so I was comfortable. I've just learned to let go right. a little bit more than I used to. Right. So everybody came, you know, we I No, told, when he says everybody. Yeah, everybody came to the house. People. You have no idea. Yeah. Like that I for some reason I wasn't expecting No, I wasn't that. either. It was supposed to be like maybe fifty, sixty, seventy people, including staff. Right. It turned out to about what, three hundred? Easily. 300, 300, 400 people in the crib. Now, um, we, 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 we shot. I mean, hopefully. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> when he says that many people in the crib, he means that many people in our crib. The first floor and our basement were inundated with people. Like I'm walking through my house and just strangers walking past me through the kitchen, through the family room, through the living room, through the dining room. There were people in the laundry room because they had to use the laundry room as one of the changing rooms. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was very ridiculous. And I was surprised you allowed that. But thank you. You know, and we tried to put together a a, a dope video. Um, The video hopefully will be ready in about a week or so. Um, you know, the, the, the crazy thing about it is shout out to Fetty Wap because the single features Fetty Wap and DJ Sling. Fetty Wap was probably the coolest ever. He mm-hmm. came with about, I would say he came with about 20 people. Mm-hmm. Very respectful. Mm-hmm. I mean, to the point, Very nice. to the point where he was like, yo, E, you know, um, do you need, you know, I, you know, I'm here with these people. Do you, you want me to leave them out off the property and just walk back and forth? I'm like, nah, you good. He was like, you sure? I mean, Fetty was playing with my kids. They were playing with the dog. They were they were just having a good time, mm-hmm. you know. And what I did was I opened, it was like a real party here, and that was a real party. And I opened up the basement to the staff, which was you know because we had to have models. There was female models and male models. There was uh, dancers in the mm-hmm. basement. There was uh, who else were down there? Makeup, Makeup artists, artists and stylists, stylists. So everybody, I put them in the basement. I'm not gonna hair. lie, I put them in the basement because I was like. There's nothing to steal in the basement. I didn't know these people. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm going to put them in the basement because I can't watch them. And there's nothing to steal in the basement. And, I, you know, and everybody else is pretty much outside the house. Uh, video came, hopefully came out dope. I, we don't know yet. We haven't seen cuts. But from the pictures and the early things that we see, it looks like it came out pretty damn dope. And we're excited about it. Now, this is this is what bothered me about the video. Mm-hmm. You know, you had all these you invite these people to your home. Like our home with our kids. Like this isn't 
a rented like this is our home right and everything was everything was everything was great there was no problems i mean everybody cleaned up when they left now during one of the scenes i had uh my jeans and I was taking my jeans off and I wore a sweatsuit. He had to do an outfit change. And I did the outfit change downstairs in the basement because the lady that was the stylist actually had to iron the clothes and to make sure I had no wrinkles and everything. Mm -hmm. So in my basement, the girls and the guys were doing their makeup and their changes in my exercise room because it had all the mirrors. Right. Now, right off the exercise room, there's a little door, you know, but not a small door, but it's a it's a door. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to make it seem like it was a little door for little people. <laughs> That's how it sounded a little bit. No, it wasn't a little door for little people. Uh huh. But um, there was a little door that I walked in that my DJ equipment is, and that you know if if I have to DJ, do a mix, or do anything, I have like a little room downstairs. Yeah, I a can, little mini studio. Mini studio. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a recording booth. There's a big board. There's my turntables. There's some records. So I walked in there. I changed my clothes. I left my jeans downstairs with you know left my jeans and my sneakers downstairs and I put on the sweatsuit and then I went upstairs to do my second shot. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I had a whole bunch of money in my pocket. Right. I had about a thousand dollars in my pocket and I was going to leave it in there because I was like, I have sweatpants on and I didn't want the big bulge bulge in my sweatpants. And, and everything was time sensitive. Like he was running around like a chicken without a head. Right. Because you might ask yourself, well, why not just take the money and put it in your bedroom or throw it in your safe or something like that? Didn't have time. We were shooting like everything was trying to get the shots. It just stopped raining. So we were trying to get the shots before it rained. Trying not to lose the light. Trying not to lose the light. Uh, we also have Fetty here and Fetty was only supposed to be here for four hours, but he wound up staying maybe what, 15 hours. He stayed the whole time. Shout out to Fetty again. So I just kind of, I was like, F it. So I put the money in my pocket and I just hid the money in the kitchen and then we we shot the shot. Um, at the end of the night, everybody left. It was dope. Everybody cleaned up after themselves. Mm-hmm. It was not a problem. The next morning I had to go to work. So I went back downstairs to get my jeans that I just tell you I left in the room to get my belt. There was no belt. Crazy. There was no belt. So somebody walked into that room. Which nobody was allowed in. Not at all. Ripped the belt off my jeans. So they pulled the belt off my jeans. Now, mind you, this wasn't a brand new belt. Like, it wasn't a belt that was like, oh, this is fresh and shiny. No, this is my belt that I wear a lot. Like, yes. I've had this belt for how long? At least a year? Probably two. All right. So, you know, you, you know, since you, we got back from Vegas that time when you had to replace it. So, ladies, if you look at your, your, your boyfriend's belt or your husband's belt and he wears it a lot, you'll notice that the holes on the belt are not even small anymore. They're just pretty much ripped up and big. And that's Well, how- no, see, that's your belt oh. because you don't respect a lot of the things that you own. Oh. Their boyfriend and husband's belts might be nice, even if they wear them on a regular basis. Your belt looks like it's been through hell. Yeah, well, I needed a new belt. I'm not going to sit there and lie. <laughs> I needed a new belt, but it was my belt. Mm-hmm. It was my belt. And it wasn't a cheap belt. Like, it was a, an expensive belt. It was my Hermes belt, you know? Right. So you, you can't even buy the belt. You have to buy two pieces. You have to buy the belt or the buckle, and then you have to buy the belt. The leather piece. The leather mm-hmm. piece. So it's expensive. Right. Somebody stole my Hermes belt. Right. Now, the reason that pissed me off was I let you into my home. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I allowed you to shoot in my home, and, and it really bothered me that somebody... Will come into your house and steal come from you. Come into your house and steal from me. Now, the sad Especially thing. Especially when we were so hospitable to everyone. Right. And, but, you know, the, the thing that was so crazy is the people that were downstairs in that area were only the models, mm-hmm. the dancers, mm-hmm. the makeup artists, and the workers that were working here shooting. The stylists, the people that were doing hair. And, 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 the cam- and, and I wouldn't say the camera people, but the, what do they call them? The people that run back and downstairs and be like, go on, you, you got to go in three minutes. Oh, I don't know. What they call them the ADs or DAs or something. I don't sure. remember. And it really bothered me that somebody would steal my belt. And I didn't even tell you, there was a pair of sneakers in there that, that were missing too. So somebody stole some oh, sneakers no, you too. Oh, no, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, somebody stole some sneakers. The sneak- same sneakers that you wore with that look? No, it was just sneakers that were down there. They just happened to be down mm-hmm. there? Are you kidding so me? So somebody stole a pair of sneakers. Wow. But a lot of that were but, used. but a lot of the people that were extras or the actors, the models, whatever, they had bags because they had outfit changes. Correct. So it'd be easy to throw something in. But let me tell you, they had to have some serious you know what's because we have cameras mm-hmm. all over this house. All over the house. All through the house. All through the house. Like you can't take three feet 
you can't walk three feet in this house without a camera picking you up. But while we were away, there was some huge storm out here where we had a power outage. Power outage, yeah. That shocked the system and it wasn't operating for a day and a half. Correct. And this just happened to fall into that day and a half. So I don't think this is like a seasoned person. They probably didn't even look up and realize no, it was that there were some cameras. was grimy bum ass person that was so damn broke and so damn cheesy. They just wanted to take a belt, which no, is No, I don't whack. think it's even about being broke They're or cheesy. Whack. I think that a lot of times when people steal, especially someone that'll come into your house, um, A lot of times that'll just fall into the category of like a kleptomaniac. Like there are a lot of people in this world that steal, not because they're broke, not because they need it. They kind of do it for sport. And then once they get away with doing it, they try it again. And then it becomes a habit. That habit kind of turns into a need Mm -hmm. where they can't be in a situation where they don't feel as though they got something for nothing. Which you know like about they this- constantly need that payoff. Right. So they might have seen you go in there and it triggered something like, okay, he came out with a different outfit. What he left has to be in there. Right. So they probably waited for no one to be around, for people to turn around in a way where they could kind of make themselves invisible, go in there with their bag, take it real quick, and then come out. I just think that that takes... He's like, you have to be very bold you know, to do that. But you know what bothers me the most about that is... Because if you get caught, like how embarrassing... You go how? into somebody's house where they invite you into their house, you know, which is probably one of the most... I would say... I'm, I, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, but like somebody invites you to their home, their place where they live. Yeah, but they don't care, Rashawn. Yeah, but they should care. You know, Those people don't care. But they should care. But then you steal a belt, a used belt, that's like that's like that's Rashawn. like that's like me stealing a pair of jeans. Like I'm gonna steal a pair of jeans where somebody has their ball juice in all awesome. day every day. That's great. Like come on, like you steal like my that. belt, and mm-hmm. this is the second belt that somebody stole from me too. By the way, let me just put that out there. <laughs> Sidebar. Well, hold on, hold on. Let's take a little <laughs> quick left. Tell them about that. Yeah, well, because was, that wasn't even the worst part of what they stole. Yeah, well, they stole. We were on our way to Vegas. We're on our way to Vegas. For the iHeartRadio Music Festival. and Last year? Two years ago. Two years ago. And we, when we went, we, you know, I had luggage. And usually I don't check my luggage. I never check my luggage unless I absolutely positively have to. He usually to. packs very light so that he doesn't have to check his luggage. And when I check, when I, when I mean I pack, I'm the type that I'm putting my underwear, my my tank tops my t-shirts in my sneaker mm-hmm. i'm the best i can pack a lot you know you know in a, in a small place so i guess they see me at the airport and stole my luggage well what happened was we checked the luggage um car side mm-hmm. right is that what it's called yeah car side like car side check-in pretty mm-hmm. much and the reason why he checked his luggage is because i was traveling with him and i can't throw all of my things in a carry-on so i had a luggage piece so he's like well we have to check it anyway so i'm gonna throw some stuff in a bigger luggage piece and we were running like very very close to time Correct. so we didn't have time to check in at the um at the counter so we checked at car side and the people that were checking it, Rashawn could tell, recognized him. Correct. So that wasn't really a good feeling because, you know, if they if they know you and you're checking it, it's like, ah, uh, I kind of feel like a little bit of a mark right now. Right. And and don't think that when, when we travel, we travel with high, super duper expensive luggage. It's not no, that No, we at travel all. with Samsonite. Yeah. Well, not even Samsonite. It's beat up Samsonite. Like our luggage has been through it. Yeah. But we do that specifically because you know sometimes we're parking we're packing things that are of high value and you don't want your luggage well i don't want some people do but i don't want my luggage to be flashy or fancy because you don't want it to be marked and for people to look at him like okay if this is what they spend on their luggage i can imagine what's inside and then they go through it at the airport right so um and that's another thing too they always tell you you know, be careful. And if you don't, if you don't have to, don't check your luggage car side. And they say the reason that is, is those people that check your luggage car side, the, the people are independent contractors. They, they, they do not work for the airline, the airline. Mm-hmm. So they don't, you know, it's, they're not responsible for a lot of the things that happen car side. So if you have a little extra time and you could walk your luggage inside, at least if you walk it inside, the airlines are more responsible opposed to the people outside, which are independent contractors. Like the airline can't even call the people outside. Like they don't even know who's working outside, you know? So 
just just a, you know just a side note for everybody that does travel but when we were traveling when we got to our destination i opened up the luggage you had to go out that night i had to go out so we night. got there kind of late mm-hmm. and he had to go out he opens up the luggage and he's in the room forever and i hear him rummaging through his luggage right and they stole a like, bunch of stuff a bunch of stuff from my luggage without going through everything they stole but they stole my belt, my Hermes belt, mm-hmm. and they stole my underwear. Hold on. So this is the worst part of it. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them exactly what it was because mm-hmm. this is crazy. Uh-huh. They stole his used, used, and used again Versace underwear. Right. But not used. I don't want to even think that it was doo-doo stains in my underwear. Okay, I mean, I didn't say that it was brown. Right. I just said that it was Yeah, I used. wore it before. It wasn't in a plastic package Correct. or anything like that. Like, it was a used piece of folded underwear. Right. And they must have seen, like, the print around the band and, like, ooh, come up. But it was clearly used right. underwear. And, l- and let me just tell people out there, because I got into a big uh, thing with this. You know, if something happens to you and it's not right, you scream, you yell, you bark, you do whatever you have to do because the airline told me that they were only going to be responsible for $250. $500. $500, right? Mm-hmm. Now, the belt alone was $1,000. The underwear was expensive. My sneakers that they stole, and they were Christian Louboutin sneakers, my, my sneakers and my shoes. They stole jeans. They stole a rack of shit from me. Yeah, they stole about $20,000 right. worth, of, worth of merchandise. Expensive stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And and things that I, I was traveling and I was doing TV, so I was I was nice clothes to wear on television. And they stole a lot of my shit. And you know I'm not gonna say the airline's name because they they finally got right. And they basically said, well, we're only responsible for five hundred dollars. Have a nice day. And I was like, no 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 no, that's not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And that's not gonna happen. And I argued, I bitched, I complained, I moaned. I would not let go to the point where they was just like, you know what? How much is that stuff worth? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's work this deal. Can I give you this because some of the stuff is used, so it's a little depreciated, and we still for it. Like, nah, fuck that. You're not gonna give me used my my half of what is old because it's used because I can't pay half to get it now. Right. But you know, just for people out there, you know, continue to fight. Like wh- whatever it is, you keep kicking and screaming. You write letters. You write letters to the CEO because it's not right. They cannot. These right. businesses cannot take advantage of you. Well, that's what it boils down to. They have insurance for, for these you, things. The fact that it wasn't right. Right. And 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 for this airline, I fly a lot with, and I told them that, and they were able to after arguing and threatening and screaming and punching and pulling and all that other stuff, they finally did the right thing. Yeah, we just had to provide receipts and, right. you know, we had to go back through American Express and have, you know, things printed out of all the things that were missing. And then they finally covered everything. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But so they did steal my belt. So that was the second belt stel- stolen. And I was like, and back to that. <laughs> it was the same belt. So the belt that was stolen at the video shoot was the belt that we bought to replace the original one that was stolen. Right. It's crazy. So for, for everybody. So now let's get back to the, to the video shoot. So it really bothered me that somebody would come in my house and and steal our shit Mm -hmm. like that bothered the shit out of me i let you into my home we shoot a very great video and you steal our shit right that really really bothered me Mm -hmm. but we'll see how the video comes out and uh, i hope you guys enjoy the single it's called text your number if you listen to the last podcast i explained it and i told everybody that i wanted to do a record that i can play if i'm in miami or ibiza or dubai or Jersey or New York or my or Atlanta or if I'm in a dirty hole in the road, wall somewhere, it doesn't matter that I wanted to have a record that I could play in both. And the record is doing extremely well. Yeah. People are streaming the shit out of it. People are purchasing <laughs> it. And I'm so grateful. I hopefully you love the video. It's climbing the charts and I'm super duper excited. So for everybody out there, I'm saying thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yes. But that was the reason why we um, didn't put out a podcast last week, because that Tuesday we were filming the video here and it was very unexpected. Very. And um, there was no time. There was no time. People were. It was like three. I mean, unless we said, you know what, guys, y'all continue to shoot the video. We got to do this podcast. But I mean, that just wasn't even it wasn't even that was a remote possibility. Right. So. So that was the reason. And we didn't want to rush and give you trash. So absolutely. 
So um, now let's let's get to the, the good stuff. Okay. Right? You know what I wanted to, to discuss with you? And, and, you know, I'm getting back to the days of, of not telling Gia what we're talking about on a podcast. Why? Why? I don't know. I just I, I enjoy it. I enjoy you asking what are we talking about? And I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> I yeah, w- he was like, I have an idea. I know what I want to do for this podcast. And I'm like, ooh, can you sneak and kind of just tell me? No. He's like, no. I want to talk about separations in relationships. Oh, okay. Why? Um, because, I mean, it's a good topic. I'm just curious. Um, And not that it's a, a good thing, a bad thing, but, you know, every time we get into a serious, serious argument, right? Mm-hmm. And you might say, well, let's separate. We separate maybe for about 22 minutes. Like you go on one side of the house. (laughs) I go on one side of the house. And then we like pretty much like, ah, nah, fuck that. And then we continue on our day. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to talk about separation and why people separate and why do people think it might be a good idea? Okay. I wanted your thoughts and I wanted to put my thoughts out there because some people say, you know what? Let's separate. Let's see what happens. Let me feel uh, somebody else out, you know, and I just wanted to talk about separations and relationships and marriages. Get your thoughts and let's talk about it a little bit. So, OK, what do you think about separation? Who um, sometimes. Well, let's define separation before I give you my opinion. How do you define separation? Because I think that a lot of people define it differently. Um, when I think of separation, I think of break. Like if we separate and we're not together um, we're supposed to be, I guess, finding ourselves. We're supposed to be figuring out if the break makes us come closer or pushes us further apart. Meaning like if we decide to separate and we're doing this because maybe we want to see if the relationship will stand us seeing other people, us, uh, you know, us being apart, will that help the relationship? Meaning, you know, maybe we miss each other and we want each other more or will it be like, you know what? I'm not with this guy and I'm not oh, I'm not with this girl and I'm, it's not bothering me. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm not even thinking about him. Like, hey, I'm out of here. You know, that's what I think separation is. Um, I think that, like I said, people have different definitions of it. So it really depends on the terms put forth by the people that are experiencing it. OK. Um, for me, if we were to hypothetically separate, I would think that it means that I'm going to do me. You're going to do you. Uh And with that, we can see other people. We can move however we see fit. Mm -hmm. And we're not responsible to let each other know what those moves entail. Mm -hmm. Um, The purpose of it to me would be (laughs) in our situation, we've been together for so long. Uh Uh-huh. Almost 23 years. Um, So unique to us, if we separated, I don't want to say a benefit because I don't think anything would really be beneficial. But for lack of a better word, a benefit would be that I would get to see what the other half is like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How another person is and what their personality would be like and um, how I would feel with somebody else. Um, So I think people do it for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that a lot of people probably do it because they're with somebody and they don't know if that person's the right person. They don't know if it's a fit, but maybe they're married. Maybe they have children and they're curious. So Maybe they don't want to break up. Maybe they don't want a clean break because it might be a mistake. Correct. So to me, I think for the most part, it's kind of like a trial. Let me see what it's like not to be with this person. And this way I can see if I like it better. And if I don't, it was only a separation. It wasn't a breakup. So I can come back. So it's like um, a breakup with the safety net. Gotcha. Is, is, is a little bit of a way to to describe it. That's how I look at it. Okay. But some people separate and say, okay, well, this is our opportunity to see what it's like not to be with each other, but you can't see other people. So right. if that's agreed upon, then those terms have to be met. Mm-hmm. Then you can't see other people. If you separate and you do that and you break one of the terms, then that can constitute a long-term breakup. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? So it, it depends on what's discussed. But the way I look at it is pretty much a breakup with a safety net. 
That's how you look at it. That's how I look at it. See, I don't believe in separation. I know you don't. And I'm going to tell you why I don't believe in separation. I mean, there's times, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sweetie. There's times where I've mentioned it. Uh-huh. I've proposed it. Correct. Um, and at those times, I might have been so upset with you over something. And I think every time that I've mentioned it, I've probably been, and, and this was a long, this was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it wasn't just once that I've mentioned it, but I think I was in the heat of a mo- heat of the moment and very upset. And feeling probably taken for granted or not appreciated. And I might have felt, well, actually, no. Now that you're, because we didn't talk about this. Now I'm kind of trying to tap into the emotions that I felt at the time. Okay. I have felt in the past that you are so used to being with me. Mm -hmm. And you are so conditioned to having someone that takes care of you, Mm -hmm. that makes sure that you're good, that Mm -hmm. is going to say all the right things and rub your back and love you a certain way that you get so used to it and that you take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And you haven't been guilty of this any time recently, but in the past, there were times that you did. And there's not too many things worse. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are things worse but there aren't too many things worse in a relationship than when one person feels taken advantage of okay and taken for granted Mm -hmm. because you feel as though you put forth all this effort and you're doing the things that you're supposed to do you're checking the boxes and the other person doesn't see it they don't appreciate it and then they don't reciprocate so for me i have felt that maybe you needed a reality check that maybe you needed me to separate from you so that you realize what you had um it's kind of like the saying you know you don't realize what you have until Until it's it's gone gone. correct and there have been times where i felt as though you needed a dose of that and it's not because i wanted to experience someone else or anything like that it was more so because i felt that at times you needed to be taught a lesson Mm -hmm. and i don't want to make it seem as though I'm the lesson teacher because I don't view myself that way and I don't really like the concept of punishment Uh in its totality but there are times where I think that a person does need a reality check so if that does fall in under the category of punishment then so be it but I have felt that you needed that at times right you know with separation and I thought about this I don't believe in separation. And the reason I don't believe in separation is for many different reasons. I think separation gives people the monkey bar syndrome, right? What do you mean by that, Ben? Kind of like, you know how monkey bars, you hang on with one arm and then you take it to the next bar and then you hold on to the next bar Mm -hmm. and then you hold on to the next bar. It's kind of like I'm holding on to you until I find a next situation. Then when I get to that next situation, then I'm going to decide if it's better for me or worse for me. And if it's better for me, I'm going to let you go. And I'm going to go to the next monkey bar. But if it's mm-hmm. not, then I'll, that monkey bar that I'm holding on to, I'm going to let that go in and come back Break home. Break up with the safety net. Right. And I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, um, I feel like, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying where, you know, a separation can get people focused. And sometimes people need to think what's going on with inside of them and fix themselves before they can fix the relationship. But I, I, I feel like with a separation, it allows people to be a little too free, meaning and and we all know relationships are always great in the beginning. Everything is all hunky dory. So for instance, let's say me and you get a separation, right? And we say, you know what, we're gonna separate for a little bit, we're gonna find e- find that you know each other, we're gonna find ourselves and see what happens. And during that you meet somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Or I meet somebody. Everybody knows the first part of a relationship is always the most amazing ever. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's the time where everybody hides their problems their negativities the things that are are not right with a person people hide i don't remember what comedian it was but the way that they put it was that you pretty much meet that person's representative absolutely you don't meet them right it's the it's the honeymoon stage so people are putting 
their best foot forward and showing you everything that you want to see. But moreover, they know that you're separated from the person that you're with. So they are going to make it their business to be everything that the person that you're with is not. Right. You know, I meet a new girl. She's going to cook and clean and lick my balls awesome six times a day and when i go to the bathroom she's gonna wipe my ass for me she's not gonna do that you know she's gonna um she's not gonna do you know she's gonna do those things she's gonna rub my feet she's gonna she might do that she's gonna lick my you know in between my toes she's gonna do all those to be licked we get it all right shut up (laughs) she's gonna do all those things and you know you meet a guy and he's gonna be mr perfect Mm-hmm. He's going to be there. You know, there's going to be a puddle. He's going to take his jacket off and lay his jacket <laughs> on top of your puddle. And, and then say, my foot's still going to get wet when I step on his right, jacket. But he's going to walk. Then you're going to walk over it and he's going to leave his expensive I'll be jacket. Like, Why there. did you do that? That was stupid. And he's going to, you know, he's going to do all the things that a man is supposed to do <laughs> to make you feel special. Uh-huh. And what usually happens is that guy or the girl usually feels special. They're like, I'm not getting this at home. Oh my gosh, this new guy or this new girl makes me feel like a queen or like mm-hmm. a king. The girl is going to stroke your ego. Exactly. She's going to stroke other things. Exactly. She's going to make you feel like a man. There you go. Yeah. And then what? And in a, in a lot of relationships, you lose those things. Right. You know, like sidebar, like there was a time in our relationship where I looked at you as Rashawn and. I didn't really realize it. I wasn't living in that moment. I didn't understand. But you walk out this house and the rest of the world is looking at you like DJ Envy. Correct. And I didn't really realize that, you know, you walk into a club Mm -hmm. and it's a thing. You know, people are looking at you a certain way. People are trying to be around you and take pictures with you. And girls are staring at you and girls are dancing sexy and seductively by the DJ booth, just trying to get your attention. All they want is a freaking glance. I didn't realize that. So you you're out there in the world and you're getting all this attention and you come home to. um, Can you move the car out of the garage? Because I have to get the kids quads out. Right. You know, like, are you going to take the garbage out tomorrow's Tuesday? Right. You know, and it's a different feeling. So you come home and you're not getting that ego boost. You're not getting that. Right. Oh, my God, you're so sexy and all of that. And I didn't I didn't see that. Right. Until I had to see that. Right. But you know what? It's the same thing with me. You know, you're going out and you're out and about whether you're going to the mall or you're going out with your friends and these savages are out there telling you how beautiful you Why look. Why they got to be a savage? <laughs> <laughs> a nice gentleman can't tell me um, that I look nice or pay me a compliment. Fuck them. They got to be savages. Yeah, okay, savages, let's take a story. I don't mind. These savages come by and tell you how beautiful you're looking. Oh my gosh, your outfit looks amazing. And you know, oh my gosh, your hair just looks beautiful in your skin. Have you just left them, uh, the massage parlor because your skin just sparkles and I've never seen a shine like that in my I hope life. that's not the game that, that <laughs> you think is appropriate because someone said that to me. I'd be like, word. I don't know. <laughs> but these savages are all, you know, giving you compliments uh-huh. and telling you, you know, you're, you're the flyest thing since uh, fresh bread. And I just made sliced, it up. Oh, sliced, sliced bread. bread I was yeah. sliced, mm-hmm. a little slice and fresh. Yeah, yeah. I like fresh bread. You like sliced bread? But anyway, I like fresh sliced bread, actually. There you go. Yeah. But these savages are all <laughs> on you, giving you compliments and and maybe, maybe, you know, I've seen you so much. I didn't say, it, baby, look nice today. Mm-hmm. But these savages are like, oh, you look beautiful. I could just eat you. And, uh, but and that's just the you truth. Up, you know? I mean, listen, I know a lot of women, my friends, people that are just acquaintances, stories you hear, just the world around me. And women, you know that this is a resonating thing. Women are in relationships. Younger girls are in relationships. And you, and we've touched on this slightly before, but you're in a relationship and it becomes maybe a little monotonous. Correct. And the person you're with doesn't pay you any compliments. And then you go out into the world and men are treating you like you're a golden nugget. Correct. And... You come back to your house or, you know, your apartment, whatever, and you, you're you just looking your man in the face like he like looking like a little turd. Now, now let me let me let me help the ladies out a little bit. Right. So now just imagine, ladies, your man is dating somebody. Right. Or you're on a break. You're on a separation and he sees somebody. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, the new girl is going to be exactly like this. Right. Hey, baby. <laughs> 
<laughs> Here we go. <laughs> now listen. <laughs> hey, babe, I know you had a long day at work, so I cooked you food. Are you hungry? And you're going to, and the most men are going to be like, yeah. And then she's going to be like, well, I cooked you all organic food, all organic. Meat. Does your wife have organic or does your girl have organic? No. <laughs> You eat regular fish and regular chicken? What about MSG? There's no MSG here. And everything has no gluten. And then you start thinking to yourself, like, damn, that bitch be giving me gluten. Uh-huh. But like that bitch really gives me MSG. Now I don't know what the bitch fuck. Trying to poison me. I don't know what MSG, I don't know what MSG is or gluten. But now I'm no like parabens. Right, but now I'm like, I don't want none of that gluten and stuff in that MSG. I don't uh-huh. mess with MSG anyway. But that's my what wife's she, not interested in my health. So you really start thinking that way. And you start thinking about the new girl. But like, yeah, the new girl cares about me. Mm-hmm. She wants me to have a healthy diet with no MSG. Now you don't even know what motherfucking MSG is. Brain free chicken yeah you don't know what none of that shit is uh-huh. right you ain't see what the health yet so you don't know what that shit is so that's uh-huh. what you start thinking mm-hmm. and and that puts those thoughts in your mind and now you really start thinking like, like wow there really is better out there exactly yeah and then what happens is you say okay well, I must I, have been stuck in a cave I'm gonna leave this not knowing there was better I'm gonna leave this um, uh, wonderful thing I have at home and go with this new thing because she gets the, you know and no MSG and, <laughs> And then when she gets you, <laughs> you start getting it. And then instead of cooking uh-huh. five meals a week, six meals a week, now it goes to five, it gets to four. You're getting takeout all the time. Then it's I'm busy. And I'm busy. Then I'm tired. And then you read the, the, the food that comes delivered to the house and you see it says MSG on it. And you're like, fuck. And now you just. I've been duped. That you've been duped. I've been duped. Because like you said, you don't meet the person. You meet the person's representative. Mm-hmm. And that's the part. That's that's why I'm against separation. And I'm like, fuck that separation shit. Yeah. But I also, I don't know. I, I do think that sometimes it can be helpful. I think that there are times where, see, with you, all it takes with you is a conversation. You know, you some time may pass and you mm-hmm. may fall back into your ways, but that's why I've brought it up in the past more than once because maybe you got it, but you didn't get it. Okay. You know, or maybe you didn't take me seriously. Maybe I threatened separation because that's really all that it ever was. Right. They were only ever threats. Like I never actually wanted to leave you when I mentioned separation but I think that for you the threat of it Mm -hmm. was enough and you would get it you'd say what you had to say you'd get right for a while but then you might fall back into habit because your environment probably is conducive to that habit correct your day-to-day the way that i treat you whatever is going on in your mind it's all part of your environment so it might i don't want to say force you because that gives you a little bit of a crutch but it Uh probably lends itself to you falling back into that habit where i might have had to bring it up again and i didn't like using that as a tool correct and i think you might have even had me figured out like she's not really ever gonna do it you know All I have to do is say this and go through these motions and it's going to go away. Right. And then there's times that I felt like I really might need to leave this dude for a week so he understands. Right. Or longer. I'm capable. Like I have willpower. Me too. I'm capable of flattening all your ties and make it so you can't leave the house. (laughs) And buying some shackles. I wouldn't buy shackles. That's too obvious. But I would definitely flatten your ties a couple times. Uh Uh-huh. Because Uber doesn't exist. You, You know what? I don't even think you got the Uber app on your phone, do you? I don't. See, there you go. <laughs> I can take oh, that. Oh, but I but I can't get it, right? All right. Well, try. It's kind. You know, something separation may even be a person's way of telling the person that they're with the things that you won't do, somebody else Elsewhere. will. Absolutely. And that's why I don't like separation. I mean, I, I think that as a couple, you should try to fix up. I, I don't think I'm not for separation. I don't believe in it. I think there's other ways. I think when you, you say, well, let's talk about those other ways. That's the thing. Like if you're saying that separation isn't a good antic, then you need to tell the world what you think are good ways to get people to quote unquote, as you put it, fix up. I mean, I, I think the main and I, I think this is the most difficult. I think it's conversation. But. And I'm, let me let me explain to you. I'm, and and you can't just say conversation. Listen, no, because conversation is just any other. No, I mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I love conversation. I just don't think that 
most people will change based on a conversation. Some people will. Some people are mature. They're enlightened. Less they the might thing. have come to a point in their life where they understand. But I think a lot of people take conversation as light work. Uh, uh, no. Yeah, I, I agree with you. but I, I, Or they just don't get it. I, no, I agree with you. But I think when people have conversations, I think a lot of time people, they have these conversations to get over an argument. Mm-hmm. And they don't have conversations to fix their relationship. To fix the problem. Or just the relationship at all. Or just to talk mm-hmm. about the relationship and get things out. And I think that's where the problems are lie. You know, yeah, we can have a conversation. Because a lot of times when we argue or people argue, we're just having this conversation so we can stop the argument. Like, I don't want to argue no more. What, yeah, that, that, that's what's bothering you. All right, I won't do it again. All right, mm, all right let's keep it moving. That's what mm-hmm. most people do, I think, in most relationships. But I think what helped our relationship even better. Or they're like, F you, F you, F you, F you. You know, a lot right. of arguments end like that right but i think with us i think what helped and what benefits our relationship even more is when we have those conversations even when they're uncomfortable even when it gets to the point where it it put a a, a tear in my eye because i just realized i was doing something or when you just realized you were doing something that that wasn't beneficial to our relationship and we're able to meet in the medium you know those are the best conversations yeah it sucks going through them because it's a lot of time you know, taken from the day. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> okay. No, sometimes we've had conversations. Because relationship's not worth time. No, I'm not. They are. But sometimes we've had com- like 12-hour conversations. But we're sitting talking for 12 hours. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's beneficial because you got everything that you wanted to say out, which is bothering you, you know. And I got everything that I wanted to say out that might have been bothering me. And, you know, a lot of times if we're both open-minded, we're able to meet in the middle and say, you know what? I understand what you mean by that. And then I'm able to say, you know what, babe, I understand what you mean. You know, I understand why you felt that way. I understand why you acted that way. I understand what made you upset. So basically, I think you're saying that it starts with open mindedness. Absolutely. um, Forsaking your prize. Right. Your pride and a willingness and a desire to actually fix the problem, not to put a bandaid on it, not to just end the conversation, but more importantly, not to antagonize the person that you're with. And that's the main thing with me. The main thing with me is, and I don't know other men out there, women out there, how they feel, but pride is my biggest problem. Mm -hmm. You know, where I might not listen or let let me rephrase that. I might be hearing but not listening. Is that right? right? Mm-hmm. Um, because my pride is taking over and my pride does that throughout my life. You right. know, but right. like with pride uh, allow me or hurt me in a way because I'm not thinking open minded and I'm thinking from a place of fuck that. Now I'm right. I know I'm right. And I've been trying to take a step back in life and saying, you know what? I can't allow my pride to affect me, you know? And that's not just in our relationship. That's with our kids. That's with uh, my, my, job that's with our businesses that's with how i walk away you know throughout the day because pride is 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 something that can really pride be is big, a very biggest negative downfall. thing it could be your biggest downfall in life you know what i mean yes and that's what i've been trying to say you know what i'm not going to be as prideful and i'm just gonna allow myself to be open i'm allowing myself to be vulnerable i'm gonna talk about that shit that i don't want to talk about because at the end of the day it makes us happy as a unit you know i don't want to be a grumpy old man sitting in the corner by myself uh, because nobody likes me and I'm 90 years old. My wife hates me. The kids hate me. I don't want to be that individual. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. I want to be the individual. They say, OK, well, I love my dad. I love my husband. He worked hard to make this relationship work. He worked hard to to do what was right. And that's the main thing. And that's what I focus on. And that's what I look. Sometimes I, I veer off a little bit and I get a little prideful and I got to get smacked in the back of the head. But that happens with every man. But, you know, that's what I try to do to make sure that. You don't come one day and be like, hey, I want a separation and I got to look at you bring Matt in the house or Bob in the house or whoever else. You didn't want to bring him in the house? Or wherever. I got to <laughs> bring him in the house. I got to pull up on y'all like Applebee's or something, you know? <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Fish tacos. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> okay. So that's, so that's one way. Do you think that's the only way to be able to bypass the idea of separation? For me, it is. I think it's conversation i think most people separate because the conversation is not there the the way that they're feeling is not put out in the open and they're feeling like people are taking it for advantage or for granted or they feel like there's something better out there so yeah i think that's the only way what about you i I just don't think that um 
I don't think it's healthy to separate to go out there and sample what else is out there to right. see what you're missing and then use the person that you're with as a fallback plan. Right. Like, oh yeah, that sucked. So I'm just going to tough it out with you. Correct. You know, because that doesn't give the person that you're with a good feeling. Even right. when you come back, that can feed resentment and make that person possibly feel spiteful. Correct. So I think that it depends on the person that you're with. I don't, I won't say that I don't believe in separation because sometimes people don't, they really don't know. They might not know themselves. They may not understand the potential of the relationship that they're in and they may need time to themselves to figure it out. It may not necessarily be about finding somebody else. Sometimes people really just need to find themselves and understand what their situation is. Mm -hmm. And you know something else? When you're with somebody and they're in your face every day or several times a week, you may not have the ability to be clear minded to understand. Sometimes I think a person might need to take a step back or a step away so that they can see the world more clearly so they can see their relationship a little bit more clearly. Clearly, it doesn't necessarily have to be about jumping out there and finding somebody else to replace the person that you're with. Correct. So, no, I do think that it can be beneficial. I think that it depends on the reason why. It depends on the person that you're with, because you may be with a person that isn't at a point of maturity where they can be open minded and have the conversation and forsake their pride and really try to get to the root of the problem Mm -hmm. and fix it. People don't, most people, I believe, don't jump out the gate with those qualities. I think those qualities oftentimes come with experience, come with understanding, come with maybe loss of a person or you know, uncomfortable situations. I think that those qualities are often cultivated over time. So if you're talking about someone that's maybe in their 20s that Mm is their experience is limited, they may not possess those things. They may not have the tools to fix tough problems in a relationship. They may need to be shocked. They may need for that person to pull away from them in order to realize what they have. You know, they might need to take a step back to see the world and to see what it's like not to be with that person so they can understand Mm -hmm. like, wow, I really do need that person in my life. So I really think it's a case by case basis. So I do think that it can be a good thing. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, I mean... I wish anybody luck who have to go through separation and hopefully everything works out the way you want it to work out. But try to make it your last resort. If Absolutely. At all possible. I think that whenever it comes to separating, divorce, I'm not necessarily uh, boyfriend, girlfriend relationships. I, it depends on how serious those kind of relationships are. But especially if you're married, I think that divorce should be the last option. It should always be the last option. I think that as married people who take vows before God, it's your responsibility to do everything possible to save your marriage before you call it quits. Absolutely. I think that if that means therapy, if it means spiritual counseling, anything that can be beneficial, interventions, whatever, you do everything that you can to save your relationship before you let it go. Because I think that nowadays marriage is too flighty of a notion. Right. You know, I don't think people take it as seriously. I think a lot of people get mad. I think a lot of people get married more for the wedding than for the actual marriage. Correct. You know, I think people like the idea of being married, but they don't love the idea of everything that goes along with keeping a marriage or doing the work or really committing themselves. Gotcha. So I think it's important to really kind of hone in everything that it takes to make your marriage successful and do everything that you can to make sure that you don't walk away from a marriage or separate before you do everything that you think is feasible to keep it together. All right. Well, I just want to say, uh, I love you. I love you. Um, and it's a wrap. We got to get up out of here, baby. 
Okie dokie. Now, for everybody listening, I know you guys sent a lot of emails. Next week, we will be answering a whole bunch of emails. So we appreciate you riding with us and, and apologize again for missing you guys on the week. But we was working. We was working. Definitely working. Um, And also, I want to say thank you and everybody out there for really purchasing and supporting and streaming my new single. It's DJ MV featuring Fetty Wap and DJ Slink. It's called Text Your Number. And I want to say I appreciate you, babe, for first of all, allowing to us to have people in our house because I know that was difficult for you. And not only that, but like you really support me when I need it the most and when I'm tired and I haven't slept in three days and I'm on fumes and I'm moody. You really are that battery in my back and say, <laughs> keep going. And, and you got this and, and, and really push me to do better. And I want to say thank you. Oh, you're welcome, sweetie. So for everybody out there, make sure I you, uh, you, I love you. Make sure you stream the record on Spotify, uh, iTunes, iHeart, uh, title, whatever, you know, and, and make sure you pick it up and support. Let me know what you think. Like I said, this single is one of those records that, I mean, it, it is it is amazing. I, I see kids making dances to it, which yeah. is dope. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's just a it's, a it's a fun record. I seen Fetty perform it the other day. He did it. He killed it. So I appreciate the support. All right. And we'll see you guys next week. Yes. I'm DJ Envy. And I am Kia Casey. And that was another edition of the Casey Crew. Toodles. Toodles, toodles, toodles.